Hello. On today's video we're going to be uh, considering how to find the domain of a function. Uh, now, this is very simple but I'm going to outline it anyway. Uh, the function, as you know, is a tool which manipulates a set of numbers and provides another set of numbers. Now, the numbers that go in are referred to as the domain and the numbers that come out are referred to as the codomain that's the whole set of numbers and the numbers that you get given what you put in is the range now when calculating the domain of a function you want to make sure that there are no errors occurring in the mathematics you want to make sure that absolutely everything that goes into the function will provide an answer you don't want there to be any anomalies. Now there are two things that we should look out for and I'll quickly outline them now. Now the first one in no particular order is when you have a number so say you're given the function is equal to 1 over x now, you want to make sure that x isn't zero, because of course, one over zero doesn't really work out as anything. It's one of those mathematical an anomalies. So you want to make sure that if you have a, a fraction, that the denominator doesn't equal zero. So any number that will provide you with a zero in the denominator, you want to take out of your domain. The second thing you have to look out for is if you're given a square root in your in your function. Now you want to make sure that the uh, the x inside the square root isn't negative because of course taking a negative as of a square root doesn't really work as far as we're concerned so when you're looking at a function to find the domain you want to make sure that you eradicate all numbers that can provide either of these two outcomes I'm going to do a, uh, a series of short uh, demonstrations uh, we'll be looking at quickly and uh, systematically, algebraically finding the domain of a set of functions. Now the first function is f of x equal to 1 divided by x squared minus 3x minus 28. Now what we want to do is we've noticed we've got a fraction, there's no square roots so we want to make sure that there's not a zero in the denominator otherwise a one is a one that doesn't change the only variables are the x terms so how do we make sure that there's no x in the denominator while well, noting that the denominator is a quadratic we simply put it equal to zero and solve it, this will give us the two numbers that will uh, cause this to equal zero and we simply eradicate those from our domain. And we write it as follows. because of course minus 7 and plus 4 equal minus 28 and because minus 7 plus 4 gives minus 3 now if we solve this we have x equals 7 and we have x equals minus 4 now these are the two numbers that we want to exclude from our domain so if we write it as a number line with 0 here, 7 is there, and minus 4. So if we call this our domain, then we can essentially 
put any number up to minus 4, not including minus 4 from minus 4 all the way up to 7 not including 7 and, min and from 7 all the way up to infinity as is minus 4 with negative infinity and we simply write our domain as follows This includes the three intervals of the domain. We can also write it as the set of real numbers excluding when x is minus 4 and x is 7. Thank you for watching. Please click on the part 2 in the video.